Hey the internet, this is Luck. I've been playing a new MMO, Wonders Will Never Cease. Uh, it's called Skyforge, it's by the All Odds team in partnership with Obsidian Entertainment. Uh, it's a really well made, uh, very well polished game that seems to have been under the radar. It's been made a little bit a little bit secretly, um, at least in my circles. People didn't really seem to be talking about it too much, and uh, at least until this beta went live. And it's, it's quite nice to skip the ride on the hype train. It's quite refreshing going into a game with less build-up and fewer expectations. Um, so I'd like to share with you some of my <laughs> some of my thoughts on that. Um, as far as the game goes, the action combat is probably going to be the big draw. If you like the sort of combo-based system, uh, using your mouse to attack, so you're, you're probably going to like the game. Uh, it's quite reminiscent of the Neverwinter combat, if you've ever played that with uh, with attacks locking you in place. It's all about timing, risk versus reward of using your combos. Um, although it doesn't punish your mistakes in the way that a game like Monster Hunter or Dark Souls uh, does. But there's certainly room for a high skill ceiling, and, and uh, skillful play is definitely rewarded. Um, it introduces what other games would consider to be quite advanced mechanics fairly early on. Um, you have to move uh, if you want to play optimally. Uh, you are rewarded for paying attention. Uh, the different zones do a really good job of introducing certain mechanics as you move through them and then layering those mechanics on top of each other like a good, uh, like a good dungeon will uh, in another game. Uh, though sometimes the payoff at the end of the zone, because of that connotation uh, that I have with a good dungeon run, uh, sometimes the endings of the zones can feel a little bit lackluster, like they're, they're missing just a big nasty at the end, uh, just to provide a satisfying climax. Um, uh, from my perspective, the game seems fairly accessible, uh, with mostly mouse-based control, there's a smooth progression curve. I never felt overwhelmed with information, uh, but that is coming from, obviously, someone who's played a lot of MMOs. Um, the game does make it very clear what you should be doing next, though, so it could turn out uh, to be a good starting point for someone who's not really engaged with MMOs before. Uh, there's a, an impressive variety of locations in the game, uh, from pure sci-fi locations that look kind of like uh, Star Wars Clone Wars-y, full of, uh, you know, robot factories. Uh, there's uh, areas with amphibious beasts and, and Naga-like creatures in what looks, uh, in places, like a contemporary beach resort with a little bit of a, a little bit of a sci-fi shake over the top. Uh, my, my personal favorite area that I've seen so far is the the floating ruins. Um, is it floating ruins all overgrown and kind of jungly big stone columns but then there's a load of the flying robot enemies from from the factory in there as well and there's these uh, ancient stone golems made out of the same rock as the the pillars and that and in the sky around there's a giant floating alien whale like creatures <laughs> just doing this weird like whale song kind of thing and it's in environments like that that it really makes me consider how how limited the genre we call fantasy turns out to be in practice you know we call it fantasy it's it's made up it's make believe but we we enforce such strict rules on it and it's really nice it's really nice i think to see a game that's willing to just try a few new things just you know spin something in a slightly different direction uh, to what we to what we commonly see um and an, another game <laughs> that it reminds me of that, that kind of did a similar thing was the sound design really reminds me of The Secret World uh, in audio cues and music. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a, quite a subjective thing. It's not a massive deal, but I, I really like that. I think it sets a really a really nice tone. It, it elevates. It's, it's a kind of mysterious and ethereal quality. Uh, the audio overall is... Um, well, it's as, it's as polished as the rest of the game, but the, the voice acting is really it's really ropey and it's quite hit and miss as well um honestly I'd, I'd prefer it if they if they just kept the original russian rather than trying to localize it at all but you know apparently english-speaking audiences <laughs> can't couldn't possibly cope uh with <laughs> with something like that um, but that is that is definitely one area that's um strangely subpar considering the the quality that we see in the rest of the game um 
Multiclassing is a real core feature of the game. You can play every class with the same character. Uh, you can switch between them um, just with one one click from your character panel. It's really quick, it's really streamlined and simple. Uh, every class that you have is on a separate progression track. It'll, it'll change, it'll swap out all of your equipment and your talents and everything automatically. It's really streamlined um, in that way. Quick and painless. Um, the character progression Interesting, the, the character progression in terms of uh, talents, etc. Um, it looked like Path of Exile for a second. When I first opened up the thing, I, I saw the circles and the, the path like leading between them. But that, that dream died really quickly. <laughs> by, by doing missions, you collect uh, different kinds of tokens that can unlock different nodes on... Uh, it's, it's called the Atlas of Ascension. You, you unlock different nodes on the Atlas. And if you can't hear it, I'm doing the big bunny ears on Atlas because, to be honest, it's just a straight line. It's, you know, there's no, there's, it, there's very little deviation until quite far into the tree. Um, most of what you do unlock is passive stat bonuses. Um, later on, the path does does split, but there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of change in playstyle associated with that or anything to stop you um, completing all the paths within it. Um, so it seems to be the nature of the presentation of the game. You know, they want it, they want it to look like a, uh, a significant and interesting way to, uh, to advance your character, um, to kind of keep up that sense of constant progression. Uh, but in practice, it's not the most thrilling system that I've ever seen. Um, the world as a whole is an unusual mix of uh, fantasy and sci-fi, or it might just be sci-fi, but then there's there's gods and immortal people, and there's not, to be honest, there's not a huge amount of exposition, which I, I quite like. It's just, this is, this is the universe, this is what it is, and it certainly makes no apologies for that. Uh, the foundations of the game remind me of uh, remind me of Warframe, especially in terms of pacing, um, the way that you go into these shorter miss missions on your way to working towards uh, a larger goal. Um, the way that missions are intended to be repeated in that way. Uh, the missions themselves, as I said, they function like short dungeon runs, or occasionally they they uh, expand out into longer uh, quest chain zones that will lead you through uh, lead you through the zone with different uh, different things to murder along the way. Um, both uh, both of these systems they do have a lot of potential for added variety and complexity. Uh, when you do repeat zones, they come with bonus missions, uh, like having to use your finishing move a certain number of times for a bonus, or you know simply not to die too many times while you're doing it. So there are extra things uh, to consider along your way. Um, I don't feel like I'm particularly far into the game. I feel like there's a lot more to see, especially in terms of the uh, complexity, in terms of the difficulty. Um, I hope that uh, those things do keep ramping up at the rate that they have been towards a high skill cap. Uh, I can't see any reason that it shouldn't. I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm looking forward to, to finding out. Um, it is a game that you can play on your own, uh, but like almost every game in existence it's more fun <laughs> with friends so don't be shy when grouping there's uh, at the moment there's plenty of people around uh, there's plenty of people chatting the integrated social network in the game i think is a really cool feature um it's honestly it's it's an advance that mmos in general have been begging for for years the the old friends list style the old guild throw everyone onto the same list strategy it's it's a real it's a 20th century solution to a problem and and now i think we can do better i really hope that um players get into the system and and use it in the way that it's intended because i think it could be really beneficial to mmos in general and uh, i hope i hope more games pick it up um in terms of the interface as a whole, uh, it feels it feels very modern as well. It feels it feels very slick. It's got more in common with a with a kind of console shooter a game like Destiny. Everything's laid out on the screen. Uh, you're not opening a series of fussy windows that you have to move around the screen and everything, which you know to me is indicative that 
as, as I'm as I'm sure you can tell from watching the game, it, it has potential as as a console game as well as PC. So, you know, fingers crossed for that. It's nice. It's nice to see more more cross platform things. Um, in terms of that, it, it, it is it is missing the open world feel that a lot of other MMORPGs have. Um, I mean, that's either a blessing or a curse, depending on what your personal priorities are when it comes to the game. You know, are you looking for that seamless adventure um, <laughs> right at the the untamed frontier? You know, are you do you want to get out into the world and explore in that way? Uh, this isn't this isn't that kind of game. But if you if you're the type of player who'll log into World of Warcraft for a couple of hours, do a couple of dungeon runs with the Finder, um, you know, just to keep up with your keep up with your progression and have a little bit of fun, you you might dig it. I think the the combat system, the potential of the variety, the way that the mechanics layer uh, so easily, um, I think I think it could be something really fun. Uh, overall, I put Skyforge in the same box as games like. Monster Hunter and like Warframe, you are you are repeating things a lot. You're seeing the same air, you're seeing the same areas quite a lot. So it comes down to whether or not the game as a whole can hit that the sweet spot of the fun grind uh, for you personally. Um, I think the nature of the progression and difficulty curve it really does have a solid foundation in that way and in my opinion it's definitely worth your time uh, especially if you bring a friend or two along it'll be free to play at launch um, if you can't wait that long uh, and you have $20 going spare you can get into the beta right now and see if you agree with me or not um, so <laughs> thank you very much for watching game's called Skyforge. Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't really... I missed the hype train for this one, if there was one. It's And going into it with no sort of preconceived notions, I, I have to say it's uh, it's been a really enjoyable experience and I'll certainly be playing more. Um, hit like if you thought this video was worthwhile, if you got something out of it, and subscribe if you haven't already for loads and loads of different stuff. And... Um, Yes, that's it, isn't it? That's the end now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.